She's lost enigmas in the dust I cannot remember Though they tell me that I must Sky is torn asunder Fear that breaks the brave Will not drag me under Climb out of the grave Make a sign or false divine This mark of worth thou Side by side, we won't come undone For the hands that will carry us home Are touched by faith
Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to game number one between Region uh, Divine and Can Counter -Stu Stupid over on Infernal Shrines. I just got through talking about how I'm not a human and I do everything perfectly, and then I like forget how to talk for a second because I'm the best around. And nobody gonna keep me down. We are in Infernal Shrines. We did go and have some bands before we got here. Maps you will not be seeing this evening are going to be Sky Temple, Alterac Pass, um, Braxis Holdout, and I should forget the last one. Uh, Battlefield of Eternity. There we go. Had to go and take a peek, but we are going to be on Infernal Shrines. First band going over to the side of Regen Divine. They did win the coin flip, and they were like, "Yeah, we want, we want the, we want the third band. We want the extra hero that you don't get to play." Uh, but the first hero they said they don't want is Sylvanas, the Queen of the Forsaken. Also featured in the Rock, Rock of Wrath that has not recorded yet, but stay tuned. It will be coming in the next month. <laughs> Alright, we do go now to Johanna to the surprise of nobody. Johanna is still very, very overtuned. People like to argue about whether or not Rhaegar is overtuned. Rhaegar is super good, but my argument is that Rhaegar is... Like, you can be like, oh, Rhaegar is so good. Yeah, okay, Rhaegar is super good. But so is Stukov, and so is Brightwing, and so is Anduin. So, whenever I see, like, Rhaegar get through the ban phase, I'm like, yeah, that's because there's a lot of other overtuned healers as well so if they get Rhaegar you still get a really really powerful pick but if they get Johanna you're kind of screwed like Johanna is just better than most of the other tanks at least that's how I see it and if I see it that way that means I am correct because that's just how things work um we do go down to the fourth band we do have Mrs. Oh being removed that may be an indication we've got D.Va coming. I hate D.Va and Sonya, but D.Va does a lot better into almost every other matchup. But no, uh, we do have the Hogger coming out. Arch Valley coming out with Hogger hunting them down. All of the bone, all of the uh, bones will be his. I have to, do Hogger and Greymane actually like fight over scraps? Is that a thing? Bankai, glad to see you. I've got, I've got the, my intro song stuck in my head. Help, it's a problem. Speaking of a monster, we do have a um, showing about the Sukov, and then we have the variant coming out with the Volcomer. Very, very. I actually just in my last series had a critical, um, like blow up comp coming out of the variant Sukov coming out of. I forget the team's name because I'm awful. <laughs> it was a team that was playing ICC Kawaii. Oh, interesting. ETC coming through. Obviously, intending on kind of breaking the taunt. Um, but that's a very, very iffy proclamation. We have Waffle coming out, coming out on the Fall Steady. So, a bit of a global coming out already from Waffle. That means they don't have an offlaner yet. Neither team actually locked in their offlaner. Both of them having their... No, I'm sorry. Arch Valley has... Uh, Arch Valley's Hogger. There is no healer. I'm a bit surprised they didn't ban a healer. They've got Stukov. Um, and they, they already banned Brightwing. So you could have gotten rid of Rhaegar. Um, or Anduin. Anduin's a really big surprise that they didn't ban. Almost makes me think they're baiting into an Anduin. They have some sort of plan. Dahaka being banned out. Uh, something Arch Valley doesn't want to deal with. And also, Dahaka is super, super scary. If you can catch him early and keep Hogger from being able to go and Sopple for a second, you can just... Because that's the thing. Hogger is kind of like a Nubarak in that he's very, very hard to kill once he gets going. He has a lot of maneuverability. But if you actually get damage onto him, he just pops. Speaking of getting damage on Dahaga, we do go to have Tychus coming out for Kalidor. And then Nazibo, um, very much a scaling hero, going to make things difficult in the late game. But, you know, they have changed him, so he's not as bad at the... Uh, I shouldn't say bad, he's not as... Um, 
easily pushed over in the early game. Yeah, bad guys, super, super glad to hear you have Wi-Fi. I, I've been in the hospital for a certain period of time without my laptop, and I cried. For the alliance of There's the Anduin that I said they were baiting out. And then they do have false... So kind of two auto-attackers. Um, obviously, Johanna's banned out, so that's not terrible, but... False Ed can go more of a mage build, but it's not the use build I usually see out of him. We'll just have to see. Last last pick coming out. Who are we going to see? Who are we going to see? We need an offlaner. We need someone to go up against that hogger. He's going to be the Gaslo. Looking forward to it. We'll see you in game in just a second. I'm going to go and get your predictions up there. Let you go ahead and bet all of your amazing channel points. Take all the sticker doodles and um, don't ruin your diet, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> See you in game in just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Leonidas drops the stun and drops the full ult. Oh my goodness, look at the health bars. It's a quad kill. He should find the kill. Lunara will clean up that fight. Oh my god, I can't believe it. It is going to be Soul Shield. You gotta be kidding me. Ron to take the 3v1, gets one. Looking for the second. Crispy is popping off. Crispy. It's like that Blizzard may connect with four oh, people. Oh, Lady Ronin. Oh my goodness, what a chat. That was really good. I forgot it doesn't automatically phase in anymore, so I was like, wait, why is it not moving? Oh, that's right. So I have to actually do the thing. Due to Fiend, um, hopefully you've already answered your question. <laughs> well, a lot of support coming out for Region Divine. Where's the CCS crew? There we go. A little bit coming back. We are coming into the game right now. Let me get this. Actually, you know what? It's pretty. We'll keep it. Um, we do go ahead and have coming out on the blue side of the battlefield, the Regency of Retaliation, Region Divine, represented by Rift playing the Raynor, Arch Valley playing the Hogger. We do have Wafflecopter on the Ghost Bird. We have got ETC being played by uh, PP Wolo. And then we do go ahead and get. Um, Absolute Yoda playing the lad himself, Anduin. On the orange side of the battlefield, representing can't counterpick stupid, the Centurions of Calamity. That doesn't really work because Centurions of Calamity start with the same letter but not the same sound. Whoopsie. Uh, we do have Osprey on the Nazebo. We do have Valamar on the um, not yet a real boy. Surprised you're that forward. You, you, you don't really exist yet, uh, Valkamer. We do have Osprey coming out on. Oh, we already said Nazebo. Kaladorn on Tychus. Uh, but Doth. Uh, yeah. Madafi on the Stukov, and then Gaslow moving up to the top lane as Zephy. So do go ahead, everyone moving back. A lot of damage to the Keldor. Keldor having to move back. Rift in the middle of a lot of stuff. Here comes a huge bit of damage. Uh, Rift taking every bit as much damage as Tychus does. Basically, this game hates Space Marines, is what I'm finding out. Stukov needs to be careful. He's also from the StarCraft universe, and that just may mean that they... Like, ultimate him. Wolfcopter takes a good bit of damage. Welcome Bird has to back off. Does not have taunt just yet. Or that would be a dead bird and chicken legs for dinner. You're going to have double soak. Uh, Zephy's going to have a hard time double soak. A Gaslow is not good at that until level 7. You have Wafflecopter coming up here to catch this because Hawker's not yet down here. And just like Wolo goes in and checks the camp, not going to try and pick it up just yet. Nice rotation around. We've got Wolo staying in. Oh, coming around looking for a slide, but is kind of all by himself. Um, I'm like, you do realize your team is down here, my friend? I wish you would back back from that game, my friend. I'm always singing, and you know what? I'm not even sorry about it. So not yet level 7, not really able to invade. You don't know, you know, have CCS just move down here. I like how Wolo is just being a creeper in the bushes. Hey guys, I see you. Continuing to double soak. 
We do go and have the Impaler King coming up here. Rift moving up to try and uh, deal with that just a bit. Uh, down at the bottom, we do go ahead and have this uh, picked up. No real damage done to the wall just yet. Looks like they are moving on Zeppi. Zeppi needs to step back a little bit. Surprise of no one, we do go ahead and have uh, Varian taking Taunt at 4. Uh, the Dean quest coming out for Tychus. Gathering Storm up to 19 stacks already. Very, very good progress. It takes a little bit of damage, but we'll be A-OK. -okay. This is when we have Frozen Punisher up top. The best Punisher to push with, but of course this is the first Punisher, so you never get that much value from it. A little bit unfortunate, because that means, of course, you're most likely... You're definitely not going to get another Frozen until at least the third Punisher. Most likely the fourth or fifth. All right, I'm moving in. Kitty, please. Kitty, please. All right, Falcon are down to about half health as they move in on the skeleton. It's about 12 apiece. We have Wolo moving over, trying to isolate Falcon, but actually getting taunted and isolated himself. Uh, Anyone does get the pullout. Uh, we do go and have to bounce it around. Oh, uh, Archbelly actually ends up inside the Nazebo wall. That's kind of tragic, but kind of hilarious. I don't need to be on Stuka. A little bit of damage, 22 all. Very, very even fights, no one going through it. Yep, Yoda goes ahead and takes out a laser blast to the face. It does seem like CCS is arguably, oh, a lot of damage. We may have Stukov going down. And indeed, First Blood goes over the side of Regen Divine as Stukov goes down. But we do go and have a big old blast underneath this cow. Beef is for dinner, ladies and gentlemen, but Zephy going to be the next one to go down. Raynor goes ahead. There's a big old slugs going into the goblin, and goblin goes down. It does look like we're going to have the uh, frozen punisher coming out in favor of Region Divine. If I can actually slow my words long enough to actually make sentences, which I don't know how to do. Level 7 all. Valkamer, very, very, very low. He's waiting. It's like, but Dorothy, will you heal me? And Dorothy's like, I'm dead. And it's like, well, yeah, but you're you're infested. Just be le like, less dead for a second. Should be fine. Widowmaker's up to 63 stacks so far for our Nazebro. We do have Hogger down here, getting this cleaned up. Nothing really happening there. A lot of damage onto Osprey. We are up to 40 stacks of Gathering Storm. Starting to really, really chunk into these low health pools. Zephy hanging out here, keeping an eye on the camp. Does see them start it? Will there be? It looks like there's a very powerful rotation on its way down. A uh, Todd comes out, but they don't really have the damage follow up that they may need. Although, as I say that, nice zombie wall goes ahead and completely cuts off each of stake. And you know what? You know what's better than stake? Even more stake. We got seconds, ladies and gentlemen. However, this does mean a hawker is being left to just run rampant up at the top. And Gaslow is on their way up there. All right, they have now. Okay, no, no never mind. I was like, they've now done more damage to the Punisher. Not actually yet. Oh, a little bit of miscommunication. A light bomb comes out, but Rift did not appear to know it was coming. Do I actually have Dragon Laser? Actually, that makes a little bit more sense on this map. Those do a lot of damage to the Punisher. We do have Tychus going down. Uh, other ults. We have already seen Light Bomb. We do go and have Mosh Pit, Hyperion, Hortipole, and Mighty Gust. 
on the side of Regen Divine. On the other side, we do go ahead and get these uh, Slappy Ghost, Dragon, Massive Shove, Warbringer, and Gravel Bomb 3000. Also known as the Mother of All Explosions. Level 11 all? All right, we do are moving back and forth. It looks like they are they were thinking about doing an invasion But then they said no, let's go ahead and step back uh, three kills to two actually I, I was thinking that more kills to come out inside of CCS but I think it's just because I got the two ETCs and I'm not remembering um, All of the region divine because they definitely have a lead right now shrine is activating but it's level 12 all Can you tell I played tennis when I was growing up? So we do go ahead and have the Shaman Camp coming along the top of the map. No answering camp for CCS just yet. There's a Valk moving in. But just a little bit of a disjointed attack it looks like. Gaslo not yet down here. Um, is cleaning up the camp. Oh! Uh... That was a weird way, because I, I think I saw they use the small bomb used before the gravel bomb. Which is a weird way of uh, sequencing those abilities. A lot of damage going on to Arch Valley. Arch Valley will go ahead and get pushed back. Nice, nice, nice shoved in order to stop the light bomb from going in. There's the taunt coming through. Um, there is the... Yeah, massive shove was down, so you can't actually stop this. But Wolo is very, very low. It looks like Valkyrie will go down in exchange. Bye-bye, Varian. Bye-bye, Happiness. Arch Valley looking like the next one. Does go ahead and knock down two members of the CCS. Rift is getting a lot of damage. Does go ahead and get blasted. The spiders go ahead and feast on feast of um, no famine. CCS is occupying the point right now. Region Divine has completely abandoned it. Hogger is down here at the bottom line trying to stop this push in. However, at the top, that Shaman Camp was allowed to push through and get a fort. Gaslow goes up and cleans up the top. Um, we do go in of Hogger at the bottom going in and do that camp. Oh, but Anduin gets taken out by the Mortar Punisher. Usually the Mortar Punisher is the worst one to team fight with, but you know what? Apparently this Mortar Punisher is like, you, you said what? Don't you know who I am? That's one question. Why don't the Punishers have names? Like, you know, the Demon and the Angel on Battlefield are named um, Belleth and Elarian. I think the Punisher name names. I, I think I think that Punisher's name is Maurice. Slight experience advantage for CCS, um, but at the same time, they actually have not gotten that much of a lead. Like both sides have taken out one uh, fort. So that's definitely not something we can look into. Yeah, Zephy. Let's go ahead and die and also uh, dedicates this grapple bomb to you guys. This is like the push is happening. Massive Shove does go ahead and get the uh, Waffle Copter out of there. And we do go to region. Nice. Thankfully, CCS actually picked this up right before. So the experience lead has gone back in the favor of region divine. They have control of the map for the next uh, 19 seconds. And even whenever Zephy comes back, they won't have a Graviton.
There is the Hyperion coming out, doing a lot of damage to this lower fort. And it looks like Talker's going to go ahead and take their take their opponent's stuff. Will Zephy check this? I doubt it. That's a big wave. Zephy's definitely more interested in trying to clear this out. Varian does go ahead and finish up Lion's Maw, as we can see. Uh, Widowmakers is also done, as is... Well, Gathering Storm's been done forever. Gathering Storm's been done for, like, literal days. That was we How did Varian get knocked out of that? Was there, like, a Tychus grenade that actually moved um, ETC out of range? So I thought that also interrupted. Oh, and we have a pause. That means we get to come back and look at me. Go ahead and move so that no one can see anything on the map. This nondescript area. Uh oh, a kid has escaped. I love, I, I, obviously we're all very aware of what get out of bed means, but I love the idea of it's just like, oh, um, you know, Valkyra actually works as a warden for, like, tr troubled youth, and one of the kids is escaping. Jailbreak! This is one thing I've never been good at, it's actually, like, yelling. Um, I don't know how to do it, I'm not good at it. But while we're here, we can go ahead and start looking at some lovely statisticians. Um, in terms of healing... The Stukov slightly out healing the Anduin of almost 50,000 done in 13 minutes. In terms of damage, we do go ahead and have 40,000 coming out of Waffle Copter. Far and away the damage leader for the game. Um, Arch probably coming in second, and then Nazebo with 25. But Nazebo scale it. It's fine. It's fine. We do have Hogger losing the Silk Race just barely by about 250. Uh, 12,000 to 12,000. So interesting, uh, both Nazebo and Gazlo have done 12,000 apiece. Yelling! All right, we do have a Valk saying that he is back and CCS is ready. So here we go. I say that as if they're about to go. CC is moving in. Both teams are level 17. These teams have done a really good job of actually staying like right within striking range of each other. Uh, it's five kills to five kills, and you have been able to get a long term advantage. Falcon takes a hefty bit. Um, ETC does not have um, Mosh, it's still 60 seconds away. Light Bomb is up, as is Gravo. There was Gravo used. Um, follow up explosives. We do have Absolute Yoda, or not Absolute Yoda, um, False Side going down. Absolute Yoda running into the back line. Uh, we do have Valkyber chasing this down. No taunt coming out. Is taunt even up? I don't know. And it does look like the Arcane Punisher will be coming out in favor of CCS in just a moment. Vault has a huge amount of damage, though. Got a little bit too thirsty. Arcane Punisher is walking forward with his little stompy steps. Uh, his objective is this fort. You know, there is an all flame battle going on here. Red team has destroyed a fort. Yeah, I know there's four stuff happening, but there's a big fight happening. And really, I mean, obviously, we all knew that fort was going down. You didn't have to actually see it in order to know it was happening. Spooky Ghost comes out. Spooky Ghost I'll also use a little bit for scouting. We have the fort going down. Keep damage is being done. First keep damage of the game. We are now a uh, structure lead for CCS. There are two forts down versus just one. Little Zephy up here doing Zephy things. 
There's almost a full level lead at this point for CCS. And they're going to go ahead and just turn the map. Oh, interesting. This is sniffed out, though. Rift is in the area. We do going to have this to be cleaned up. Right now, the, the Gasly is over here. Once again, just continuing to walk around with a big old paintbrush and be like, you know what? These minions look cool. I mean, like, you know, russet brown and... You know, but what, what, what if we made them red? Isn't that just better? Look at how those have pops. If you did not know Gaslow was Bob Ross, I do not blame you because we all know Bahamut is Bob Ross. Teams are stepping around their staging. Uh, they don't really have an opening. There is a level 25, but they don't want to do it. They're waiting to see if anyone steps too far out because they can definitely snap some necks right now. We have Rainer down here uh, off lane trying to make sure that nothing happens here. That definitely gives CCS an advantage, but they still don't want to push in with it. Looking at the level 20 upgrades, we do have Annihilating Spirit, uh, Focusing Diodes, Pop Off, Glory of the Alliance, and Bomb Toss. All right, there is the great, great Gus. Big root coming in. Osprey, a bit massive shove. And we do go and have. There is a silence coming down. Great hush puddle. Went ahead and stopped that. Gravel bomb goes in. A little bit. Oh, oh, oh. We have Death Boss. I hadn't noticed that yet. But unfortunately, uh, we already had the main DPS down. So the Death Boss was not able to accomplish anything. And CCS is moving forward. CCS says, You made us dance. Nobody makes us dance. Poor Rift! We do have two people down for 30 seconds. They say we can win this. I do like how they move through. They were just like, I'm just gonna run around. Run, 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 run around. And that is it. Game one goes in favor of CCS. Rather decisively. So at the same time, it could have easily gone the other way. Uh, please don't let my CCS fangirlism like distract from the game. I definitely am certainly, certainly, certainly willing to take my hat off to Region. They played very, very well. So looking at stats at the end of the game, we do go ahead and have 86,000 healing coming out of Stuka. You know, I already talked about uh, stats. Let's look at Talents. Talents are more fun. So I'm on the gas though. Um, does go big game hunter at one. Um, okay. Does go the derivative talent of easy piece of visual ripper at four. Goes for master. So this is actually like the anti Sonya build to a certain extent. Um, wasn't going up against Sonya, but it probably works against Hawker pretty well. Let's go for overcharge. Oh. Interesting. So yeah, actually no, this makes a lot of sense. Overcharge capacitors allow you to just get infinite of these turrets at the point. Because as long as you're still melee attacking the whole time, then the um, capacitors, the turrets just don't go away. Arc reactor, we just going on explosion charge by two. Cool, cool beans. And then bomb toss, as we said. Everything else looks relatively normal, but I don't play these heroes. So don't, don't, don't um, are, like think too, too terribly much. But with that being said, I will see you guys in just a second for game number two. I will get your points to you and be awesome.
Civil War. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number two on Dragonshire. I will take Dragonshire as an apology for banning Braxis because I love Braxis so much. <laughs> Super plus happy. So we do go ahead and have um, first pick retained on the side of Region Divine, which does mean Dragonshire is the selection from you Can't Counterpick Stupid. We do have the Sylvanas coming out. Or more correctly, not coming out because she is banned. So, also, before we get too, 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 too distracted, everyone. I know I've had a co-caster a lot. I don't have one tonight, unless you count. Second best co-caster ever. So we do go and have the Brightwing being banned out. Uh, global on this map is definitely something I, I kind of expect. I do have to wonder if Falstead will be the second ban because Falstead was, was... I mean, obviously CTS won, but Falstead was oppressive. Got that quest stack so, 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 so quickly. I don't know if that reserves more so's, but I kind of want to give it more so's. 
And then this Duke of Love with a healer choke coming out. I will show you a monster and all that. Alright, final ban. Who are we going to see? Will it be false head? No, they do get the Joe. I do not blame this decision at all. So with Brightwing and Stukov down, who's going to take the Rhaegar and who's going to take, um... Probably Anduin, if I had to take a guess. I want to say Anduin, and so I will. Oh, Monday Zebra coming in here. Hello, hello. Hello, Zebra fam. We do also have Arts Valley coming in on the Hogger almost immediately. Um, that's an interesting pick, although not a bad one. Hogger does do relatively well into uh, Rexar, and Rexar is very, very prominent on this map. Plus, Arts Valley is just very, very comfortable on the uh, on the hero. Uh, Zebrites, welcome to the game. We are going into game number two, as you can see up at the top. We game number one was. Um, conquered by Can't Get a Big Stupid. Tyke is coming out immediately with the uh, with the Diablo in order to take Diablo's biggest counter or one of his most significant counters off the battlefield at the same time. Dun, 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 dun. So we do go ahead and have the Tyke. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, there's. So Rhaegar is friend. the pick coming out. I do have to, I really have to wonder if they'll ban out the Anduin at this point because I feel like the top four healers are without question. Rhaegar, Stukov, Anduin, and Brightwing. So they ban the Anduin here. Then, however, they don't have a tank yet. I do have to wonder, are they going to get rid of Mei or Anubra? Based on the comp they've got going so far, I imagine Mei is more likely. Nope, did you say with that Zerg's little ban? Well, Wits has not taken a hero yet, but, 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 they will. There's a lot of butts. All right, we do go ahead and have the tor Okay, actually, that makes sense with Wits being in the game. I was like, I'm just like completely in meta thoughts right now. I'm like, wait, Taronda, she's not one of the meta heroes. She's not one of the scariest ones, but in the hands of Wits End, yeah, Taronda is terrifying. So shut my mouth. All right, and Aressa's character comes out from Madashi, and Zephy is going to go, uh, Sonya into Hogger. That's going to be an interesting top lane, to be sure. So, we still need a tank and our second DPS. Um... Both DPS have been picked up. It is only the healer still pending. Relatively bulky team coming out of the side of Region Divine. Um, Sony's going to have a bit of a problem because she, she can leap in, but there's not a whole lot she can just execute. Oh, Darna coming as well. Everyone, Everyone's paying attention to me. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. I'm super glad to see... Super glad that you all decided to join me tonight. We are going into game number one in just a second. This is Wiss decides to be the old man Decker Chain. Definitely not a bad pick in any stretch of the imagination. So we are going to go into the game right about now. I'll get your prediction up in just one second. Don't go anywhere. Don't fret. Don't cry. And I will see you in... Well... I won't see you until after next game, but I'll keep talking to you the whole time. Because you can't get rid of me. I'm like an earworm. Leonidas 
Drops the stun and drops the full ult. Oh my goodness, look at the health bars. It's a quad kill. He should find the kill. Lunara will clean up that fight. Oh my god, I can't believe it. It is going to be Soul Shield. You gotta be kidding me. And Rana takes the 3v1, gets one, looking for the second. Crispy is popping off. Crispy. It's like that Blizzard make connect with four oh, people. Oh, Lady Ronin. Oh my goodness, what a chat. That was really good. All right, coming into the battlefield on the blue side, um, we are going to go ahead and stop with, start with Regen Divine, the um, Duchy of Desolation, representing our blue team. PP Willow going to be on the Anubarak. We have Arch Valley once again on a Hogger, really likes this hero. Rift's going to be on the Phoenix. We do go ahead and get Absolute Yoda on the Ghost Wolf. Ooh, spooky ghost. And we have Waffle Copter on the Junkrat. Very colorful Junkrat. I like it. It makes me happy. On the other side of the battlefield, in the orange trunks, we do have Can't Counterpick Five, Stupid. Four, the Sovereigns of three, Slaughter. Two, we do go ahead and get Madathi one. coming out here on the Lunara. Keladorn on the Infested Tychus. Uh, Wits End is going to be on... Or Osprey on Diablo. Wits End on the Old Man Deckard Cone. And then Sonya coming around to come in from the top. Great lead position. Just got to get 10 levels real quick. Alright, absolutely Yoda jumps in. Um, it does look like we've got a hogger in the top lane. Looking at talents that are level 1, Sonya does start off with a Furious Blow. A W build coming online, it looks like. We have Skilled Study coming out of the Decade Pain. Soul Shield, um, as highlighted in our intro video. Cinemas and press to advantage, interesting. On the other side of the battlefield, we do have Legion of Beetles. Um, only advanced targeting used as a questing talent. All right, Phoenix goes ahead and picks that up. Now they move in for the invade, although their opponents do not have variants, so this invade may be um, poorly planned. No, never mind. We do go ahead and have Waffle Copter down here. So this is a full five versus four, and the invade is successful. A little bit of experience advantage command of Regen Divine as they go ahead and push in for what damage they can. Here comes the side of CCS walking through there. Osprey gets booped forward. A little bit of damage coming into them, getting down to 50% and already used. Oh, there is a great, great, great scroll ceiling coming out of the Decker Kane. Big old explosions, the mother of all explosions, you might say. Poor Osprey. Oh, nice, nice, nice charge to get out of there. There is a pull-in, but absolutely Yoda getting absolutely shredded. I feel like they pushed a little bit too far because they did have the Dragon Knight. Now, obviously, they got the Dragon Knight successfully, but they shouldn't have pushed forward quite that hard whenever they were, like, down. It was four versus three. But we do have a Dragon Knight, or a Dragoon became a Dragon. Basically, Phoenix just lost one of his O's. We do have level 4 out. Uh, we do go ahead and get the brute force coming out of Hogger. They'll like this one. I don't know why I always like that voice line. It always makes you, it always cracks me up a little bit. So like Zephy is losing it, which is not super surprising. Sonya does struggle into Hogger. I know. I had this matchup. I hit it. Definitely not a matchup that I'm looking to have. Oh, we do go to Absolute Yoda and Rift over here, picking up this mercenary camp. 
Junkrat down below, but that's a lot of orange bars on the other side of the battlefield. <laughs> a lot of damage coming in from... Or not a lot of damage, a lot of invasion happening. Alphacopter going to check this out. Let's go ahead and see. We do have a uh, Wolo, and every the whole army is coming down here right now. It's going to be a four versus four. Neither offline are making moves just yet. Rift takes a huge bit, and there goes the Dorito. We also have a Root coming down onto Absolute Yoda, and the camp is picked up. Nope, not yet. I lied to you. I lied to you all. So we are two kills to zero in favor of CCS, but one Dragonite has come out already for Regen. Zephy is just about to be, to be taken out by these guys. That's tragic. Okay, does have a sippy cup ready. Alright, pushing into the bottom keep right now. They say we may not have a dragon, but you know what? We've got poison. And I don't actually know how poison works on buildings, but it absolutely does. This look, I like this from region, though. They're like, okay, they've taken advantage. They are. We can't really fight them down bottom. We can go ahead and take their stuff while they take ours. It's odd they go for a mid lane, though. Very, very nice disengage. Level 10's not yet here for either team. Oh, but, uh, Taiki? You're gonna have Witten moving over here. They're gonna go ahead and try and pick up their Giants. You need to be careful, there may be an invade, but I don't, does not look like it right now. This looks like Tychus is back and on the attack. <laughs> Welcomer, thank you for the raid. And once again, I'm not even paying attention, but Phoenix goes in and becomes a dragon. He really, really wants to lose that O. Definitely an experience advantage, and at this point, a structure advantage coming outside of Legion Divine. Looks like Madafi going to go in and be focused on. Let's try and get out of there. There is a rip tower coming through. Does blow up, but does not actually get any value. There's a boot out, but that does put the Dragon Knight in range of both uh, outer turrets. Hello, Eric. You go ahead and have Hogra up at the top of the map. I'm going to go ahead and try and move in, take this final fort. Leave catapult pressure in every single lane. Blue team has destroyed a fort. So with that being said, we're going to have Zephy go ahead and move into here. Osprey goes ahead and knocks all this down. Waffle Copter trying to get out of there. Oh, I was going to say, Osprey goes in, but the rest of the team are already giving up the chase. I always hate when that happens. It happens a lot in my games. Where it's like, okay, got them. And they're like, oh, we, 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 we thought they got away. Why don't you have faith in me? Speaking of not having faith, here comes a big old, big old, big old invade. Zephy getting absolutely pulverized. Trying to get out of there. Is spinning to win, but will not survive. Nice, nice rip tower coming in from Joker at the back. This is going to be CCS just going in and donating to the death fund um, established by Region Divide. 
die today to help impoverished youth in your area? A little bit more morbid than I meant it to be. We do go ahead and have a lot of damage coming in. They're going over the death bridge, but here's the thing. Once they get to the other end of... Okay, they're going to fall back. Never mind. Peter comes out, goes and clears that up. And once again, it looks like they are planning to make a dragon. Because here's the thing, whenever a shaman and a demolitionist love each other very much, beams will channel to the middle of the map and a dragoon will become a dragon. This may have been a bad map to bring region to. They definitely seem to know what the heck they're doing. Alright, we do go ahead and have the lightning breath coming out of Diablo. There's a roof coming out on Lunara. Stay a while and listen, does go through. And Zestral is used to keep Zephy up, but Zephy going to go ahead and actually get out? Okay, that was a thing. That was not a thing I was expecting. This is maybe the end of the game right here with three people down. Um, Caledorn does get slowed down quite a bit. There's the Hogger, big ol' Explosion. And that is going to be the end of Tychus. That is all she wrote. I don't know who she is, but apparently she doesn't like Tychus. That's like half the women in the Kapulu sector. GG, game number two, and a very, very decisive win to Region Divine. I can say that this time. I felt bad when I said decisively in game number one, but hey, and this time we've got a little bit forth and back and back and forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at this right about now. So... In terms of healing, we do have Wits in leading the way, but just barely beating out Rhaegar, 31,000, 27,000. Damage, though, that's a whole other story. Blue swathing the board. Number one damage was blue. Number two damage was blue. Number three damage was blue. And Wafflecopter calmed down, beating everyone else in the game up by 2,000 or 20,000, more than doubling the highest damage CCS player. Wow. Looking at experience contribution, we do have 11,000 coming out of Sonya and 9,000 coming, or 98,100 coming out of Hogger. Talents wise, we got those. Scroll of Ceiling, we do have the Rubies, Cube Mastery. I didn't even realize we were only at level 14. Holy wow. Um, looking at Sonya, we do have W Build, uh, Battle Rage to get the Mercenaries, and then No Escape. All right, and with that being taken care of, I will see you in game number three. I'll pay your points, I'll update the board, and all things will be up majestic.
stop because we're brothers in blood now. We'll meet again now at the end of the line. Try not to think about what fate throws before me. Reporting for duty, sir. Where the bluest skies, they float on by the streets all paved in gold. Where under the smiles fair and pretty, our teeth so very white. Into the bones of our burdened nets they bite. Baptized in the water, you train in the way you yeah. You built up your heaven. The back of hell. Divine is the daughter. The dream that you say, yeah. You built up your heaven on the back of
Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to game number three. Yes, we have a game number three. The rubber match, as it's sometimes called. My hair keeps trying to fall down into my eyes. I know it's trying to do that, like, uber gothy thing. But still, it's not quite long enough to really pull it off where I can, like, cover my eyes with it. But anyway, we are uh, into game number three. First pick this time, going over to the side of Pant Censorship. I wish we, I've like mirrored, so I have to point the opposite direction than I think I do. And Keldor, you did not miss, no one has called in boots. I'm actually amazed. Monkai is obviously a bit like not feeling well. So we do go ahead and have Brightwing being banned out. Also, Johanna, surprise of no one. Part of me always like wants to like ban Johanna second um, and give them hope and then take it away. But banning it first is probably smart. That way you have more time to think about the ban that actually like is variable. There we go. There we go. I was waiting for it. Zero tool continuing to be the ban. If you've been here for a while, you've seen these before, but these are my punk rock cowboy boots. I call them the cowboy boots because over on the other side. You have these little chains that kind of like uh, rattle like spurs whenever I'm walking around. Got the little uh, cutesy goth bow at the top. I, I love them to death. All right, getting back to the actual draft, we also had Stukov being banned out. So again, a little bit of a healer choke, and no healers being picked up immediately. Um, CCS, I would definitely say lock out a healer, and then use your last ban to lock, take out another healer. Go ahead and lock in either the Rhaegar or the Anduin. Nope, that's not the play. They do want Zephy. I don't blame them for trying to get the Hogger away. Um, Hogger does pretty well until the Orc. You do have to kind of save your E in order to break a Drain Hope, but still, I think you definitely win that matchup. What's funny is that Interessa talks to me all the time, but I almost never showed off my boots in, like, our... Whenever we play together, it's just, it's a thing that came up. So she's seen pictures of it, but I, I don't think she's actually been here all that often. People redeem it. With that being said, we do have, uh, they do get rid of Phoenix. Uh, just because Tin is in chat. I wonder if that's a meme. And they do also go ahead and get rid of the Varian on the side of Region Divine. Neither side having picked up a healer or a tank yet. And surprisingly, both damage on the side of CCS already picked up. There is the Rhaegar, and PP Wolo is going to come out with uh, the ETC. Caster. I 
So there is the Wits in Taranda that we've talked about already. And the Valkamer. So the brothers are going for stun for days. I can never keep track. I, I switch them out on a pretty regular basis. Let's there is the uh, false head coming once again. Um, are we actually... I, I pretty, Is Waffle Gopher actually not... Well, Waffle Gopher also did really well in the jungle. I don't know. Junk, apparently Waffle Gopher just plays everything. Oh, okay. One sec. Move cat, move cat. Move, 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 move. Uh, interesting cat number three. Or interesting cat. Wow. Interesting fact number three. So this is actually, it's a story that I absolutely adore. Um, you may have seen it if you saw the film Lincoln, but supposedly whenever um, we went over, and oh, this is a bit of a long story. I hope I have time for it. Whenever we went over to sign the like articles that ended the Revolutionary War, um, the British were kind of hacked off um, because obviously they were having to concede America. So they decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and get back at these American delegates. And they hung a portrait of George Washington in the loo. Um, and so whenever America went over there, then they like waited and waited for several hours. So see, we're drawing up tender conditions. Eventually, Ben Franklin actually went ahead and had to... Um, like, used the facility, and they were like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, they waited, and uh, Ben Franklin left, did his business, came back, and just sat back and got back to work. And the British were just kind of, like, sitting here, like, huh, huh? Finally, one of them was, was like, okay, well, did you notice anything about when you went to the restroom? And Franklin was like, what, what do you mean? It's like, well, it, did the decor suit you, sir? And Franklin kind of, like, looked confused, and he was like, you mean the portrait? Um, it's like, yeah, yeah, the portrait of, of Washington was it to your liking. And then Franklin was just sort of like, well, it caught me by surprise, but then I realized it made quite a bit of sense. And the British people were like, what, what do you mean it makes sense to put it there? And Franklin just said, it's, it's, it's all about efficiency. Um, if you want to, if you want to scare the sh out of a uh, Englishman, nothing will do that better than the sight of General George Washington. Supposedly a true story. So we have Valkamer taking a good bit of damage. Let's go ahead and burrow charge out of there. Um, do not get to introduce the teams because someone wanted to learn an interesting thing today. And that is A-OK. -okay. We do have level 1 talent. Actually, the only um, stacking talent in the game is going to be Gathering Storm. Which we do know very well. Although, actually, that'll be interesting. Because, again... Um, we do have a different fall set player. Wolfcopter is on the junk rat. All right, a lot of CCS moving in there. Great, great, great stun. There's Valkmar going in. Absolute Yoda is absolutely getting away. Okay, thank you. I was concerned. I was like, this is not the narrative. Please read the uh, plot next time. I beg of you. I beg of you. I love how they didn't get the tower. They were like, we want this kill. We want this 3.5 millions worth of experience. Oh, that's a weird hey, Tim. Because, yeah, it's set up to um, not require that for anyone that's following for 24 hours. But, obviously, I mean, you just followed me, so... Clearly you're lying to me, QQ. I kid it, I kid. So, getting back to the actual game, we do go ahead and have... Witsen and Madathi moving up. Osprey is getting us taken care of. Hoppy Deer is indeed best deer. Q 
huge bit of damage going to Valkamar, but the Burrow Charge does get out of there. Valkamar goes down to 200 health. I'm gonna go ahead and sip from the nourishing uh, waters of the Moonwell. I refuse to call it a Helium Fountain, it's a Bloody Moonwell. You go ahead and have Hogger down below. Zephy going to go ahead and get this done. Arch Valley, nice, nice, nice move there. But does go ahead. Was trying to slow them down and get some Drain Hope, but does end up using the Ocean Renewal. Um, did it also take Mule Peasants, so... That's interesting. Obviously, Mule Peasants will help him clear the spider a lot faster, which I guess is the reason they picked it up. Nice little engage so far. So far, the only kill on the CCS was that uh, Omega Dive on the Rhaegar. Yep, that's the word I used, Omega Dive. You go ahead and have Osprey bouncing back and forth. Zephy almost got himself into trouble by bouncing directly back into the Lion's Maw, as the case may be. A lot of damage on the Zephy, but Zephy will get out of there. Leor takes a lot of damage, was was trying to move in and get to Zephy, but then was standing within range of both um, artillery characters. So obviously everyone and their dog knows they're on this camp, but I don't know there's much they can do about it. Red Weavers are descending. In case you've never seen the actual animation, because I know I typically don't, except what I'm observing. A lot of damage, big, big, big four man push to the bottom. A Nubrak is mid. It's interesting that a Nubrak is the one that's not here. All right, one for one. We do have the healer uh, going down because uh, poor Toronto's big brother wasn't here. Actually, I think it's a little brother. I'm pretty sure Wiz is the older one. There is Sylvanas just getting it like infinite value. <laughs> it's a circus of value. Thank you, Light Bane. That's a reference none of you got. You know what? That's okay. Oh, poor Waffle Copter. Arch Valley gets out and Waffle Copter. They're just like, nope. Interesting use of an Entomb. Like, they're trying to go towards the one direction and Entomb doesn't stop them. All right, go me. That's what I thought. Oh, Zephy taking a lot of damage. Just go ahead and move out of there. Rift goes in and moves in. Has to use the Horde Pulse just to get himself clear. Already 34 Spider Bus turned in on the side of CCS. Nice silence comes in, uh, completely interrupts that mosh pit. Uh, it does interrupt it on the windup, not after it comes out, so it will be up again. Happy deer, evasive deer. All right, we are only three spider butts away from a turn in on the side of Vision Divine. Arch Valley does move forward. Um, this one go ahead and get stunned for days. 
That's a lot of gems. Goodness gracious. They just went from like 50 down to 22. that voice line so much oh my goodness hawker just goes ahead and cleans up his wretched foe all right we do go and have the um red team moving forward but the blue web weavers do get turned in we have already got hawker up here cleaning up the top one there is a nice little loot horde to bounce off of you are in the middle the middle web weaver is being picked up, but here is the rest of the blue team. Region Divine says we are, we are declaring a holy sanction over this web weaver. No one will hurt it. It's our it's our son. For being allowed to run a buck. I came down here, but no. It looks like CCS is just like, we want to kill stuff. Uh, nice Ancestral does go ahead and save the Junkrat. Kind of disagree with not dealing with this, gotta say. It's like Zephy is like, okay, I'll go, I'll go clean up. Other team gets a gets a janitor, and you expect me to play cleanup duty too? Heckin' rude. I don't know what happened, but suddenly could be up like I'm really close to the action. I don't want to be. So bottom has been traded out one for one. Middle is a little bit hurt and the wall is down. Top wall is A-OK -okay for right now. <laughs> Alright, here comes the four man. Hawker is, um... Nope. Hawker's actually coming up in order to make this a big engage. There is a nice, and we do go ahead and have the uh, star fall coming down. Huge bit of damage. Silence comes down. Hogger goes ahead and loot hordes uh, forward. We do have Lunara comes in from the side. Nice, nice, nice evasion, but it looks like Zephy is in a more than a little bit of trouble. Sylvanas has left the game. Want to buy pause? Again, as the uh, caster, I'm not going to pause for them. Plus, I don't even think I can. Nope, I don't even have the option. So even though I wanted to, I uh, cannot do it. Yeah, this is this is a whole lot of death. This is what death is made of. Well, Madafi is back. Um, I'm still surprised CCS did not pause. Apparently that was just a, yeah, Madafi, we decided the bot would play better than you. So we do go ahead and have all three forts are down on the side of Region Divine. But here comes another wave on the other side. So we're starting to move back. Um, Hearth away from Absolute Yoda. This is, uh, I've got like no health or no mana. gonna be a very very forward and just will get cleaned up super easy barely an inconvenience oh. 
There's a lot of damage coming into the mid lane. We go and clean that up. There's a death wave. Don't don't get hit by the death wave. It's called that for a reason. All right, the only the bottom one. They have saved um, all of the force that they were trying to save. Arch Valley is going down below, staying in the staying in the mist. That is a spooky walk build. I recognize how fat, how like low that bar went down. I like that build too. Wait, what was that? Splintered Spear at seven? That's a one for one. That was their tank. We have Osprey running in, being like, I will kill all of you. And that may not be idle ba uh, banter. Man, Lunara using a really like old build for Lunara. I haven't seen this build in a long time. It's It was good. It's a good build. But it's kind of been eclipsed by the Q build. They are able to turn in. It's like they are sending Zephy back to take care of that. Uh, Anubrak is not back, but Falstad and ETC will be down another 15 seconds. Oh, the first admit, I don't play a Lunar a whole bunch, but I definitely saw most people going over to the um, increased damage on Q. Alright, a lot of damage from good. Web Beaver will go in and get cleaned up very easily. We have a Web Beaver moving up top and up bottom. It does look like CCS is moving bottom in order to help clean that up. The boss goes ahead and turns off the wall. Um, unfortunately, the Web Beaver is dying as it moves forward, but that's not going to hold it back for very long. CCS right at the cusp of level 20 right now. Well, at least be careful. This is exactly uh, like right before 20 is when they want to engage, but 20 has been picked up. We are going to go ahead and see intensifying toxin, no control, ice blade arrows, rewind, and unknown. That's tragic right there. Oh, that was a hog wild. I'm like, what the heck is Zephy doing? Oh, someone clipped that. That was hilarious. Is that they moving like he's Lucio? All right, without 20. Now their opponents are moving forward and do have enough for a turn in. So yeah, this is not going to get a whole lot done. A waffle copter? That may not have been the best move you could have made. Oh, but there is a fantastic, um, lot of, lot, lot of engagement. Here comes the no control.
boss has gotten through is going to go ahead. Now that's the thing, they're actually distracting the majority of Legion Divine. So that means that these web weavers are not getting a whole lot of value. CCS almost has enough for another turn in. They are about seven short at the moment. Both teams level 20 at this point. We do have Cannonball, Death Metal, uh, Farsuit but Buried Alive, and Wind Tunnel. Madafi does go ahead and have uh, enough for turn in. But of course, the enemy team sees that. Here's the thing though, they can't stay and defend the points for too, too terribly long. They have catapult pressure putting them in every lane. Only top lane is even. Alright, CCS is looking to push top, it looks like. That's where most of them are anyway. Interesting play, I like it. Um, mid will go ahead and push to end while they can keep their opponents top. Although, as I say that, they're going mid. I like the ring around the rosy they did. And Tomb does come out and misses. Alright, Zephy moves back, but the top one has been taken care of. The bottom web weaver is not going to get a lot of value. And they didn't even make it through shields. Okay, they are. Uh, this is the edge of the beat, like Lisbon. Like if if CCS can get kills, they can end the game. They are having a really hard time actually doing it. Yeah, that the silencing in tomb is so. If you stay really nearby at all, they're moving in right now. They are down a hogger, which is a problem. They're turning in, but they, they have 20 out of 70, which is not close. If I want something for $70 and someone offers me 20, I'm like, uh, no. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Oh, Auto parts.
arch belly, arch belly, arch belly. There is okay. The the dust is saved by the ancestral. They did pull their opponents off of boss, which was maybe the point. All right, we have now CCS going for the boss. Are they? Are we going to have a sensible invade coming out of region? They're coming in. Did go ahead and stop the charge in. There is the. Oh, unfortunately not. Well, that when I moved it in, and there is that. Death Watch comes out, but Death Watch misses, and we also do not have a lot coming out of the Entomb. Zephy moving down, going ahead and Hog Wild just grinding up against this Leoric. There's the Silencing Arrow. Um, well, Lunara just bat down. We do have a kill onto Junkrat. Leoric is still alive, but that is two for... Nope, Leoric does get taken out by the Owl, I believe. So Yoda going to survive for the time being, but that may not matter. They're not. That's not actually the point. CCS going for the win right now. A lot of damage on the Zephy. We do have Rift just going out of his mind. And apparently, when you're out of your mind, you get sent back to the Sanitarium, which is right there. Game number three will be going in favor of CCS. Let me go and see if we can get us an interview while you guys oogle the stats. Oogle, oogle. Alright, we'll see who joins us, if anyone. I'm having fun. While we wait to see who comes in, looking at talents right quick. We do go and have Leoric does go Ocean Renewal. Um, Neo Peasants, like I said, interesting pick. Maybe not what I would go. Um, range rather than move speed. It's also a bit odd. Usually you see that one tied in with the drains, but with for spooky walk build. Create a life is the level 20, of course. I talk about the Lunara build. Still no one has joined me just yet. I has a concern. But while I stall for time, we will go ahead and have, in terms of the healing, say I always start with healers because I like healers to light me. Um, we do go ahead and have Absolute Yoda leading the healing war, doing 119,000 compared to 86,000. We do have 95,000. Okay, apparently Keldorn is coming. Good, I'm like, I only have so much I can talk to talk about. Um... 95,000 on the junk rat compared to 75,000 coming from Luna. Which end actually doing the third most damage with 53,000? In terms of that soak, uh, the offlaner is getting outshined by the DPS. Which is kind of hilarious to see. And it looks like we do have a Kelladorn. Hello, hello. Hello, Raka. How are you this evening? Doing relatively okay. Can't complain, uh, especially not after that. It's like a bomb just went off in my I, heart. I uh, can't complain either. I was I was watching that. That was a good game. Okay, Falk, you just read to me again. <laughs> did did Falk 
raid me and then start streaming again and then raid me. That's confusing. I'll anyway. One raid, so. Still confusing. Uh, first of all, very much congratulations. Now, I do... Were you in games one and game two, but not game three? I can't really remember. Uh, that sounds about like what I remember as well. So, game number one was on Infernal Shrines, the most unique and a rarely played map in NGS. You almost never get to see it. Yes, the sarcasm is heavy in that statement because it's the most played and everyone plays it and no one ever bans it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I might be sick of casting it, just possibly. <laughs> but regardless, you guys had a very, very, very good game on that map. Um, I think they only got one fort from you. I won't say it was a blowout. Like, it definitely felt like they could take that away from you at any point. They were they were playing well. It was just that whenever they would get the objective, you guys managed to clean it up. It was like early game, and you cleaned it up before they actually got the structure, and you just kept getting the later game objectives. What do you that what do you attribute that to? I attribute it to very well planning from our team. We were talking, we were very vocal. Uh, we were moving around the map. Um, when we started to lose a objective, we were just like, what are we gonna get? Where are we gonna get more value? And that's really important on shrines is if you're not getting the objective, what are you doing? Because do something else, get somewhere else, get more value. And that's how you win shrines. That's how you counterplay a picked up uh, Punisher. Especially the early game. Like the earlier the Punisher, the weaker it is and the more value you can get elsewhere. Yeah, I did definitely notice you guys were very much prioritizing pushing anytime you had an opportunity to take stuff away. Although I do have to say in all three games, you guys would occasionally get a little bit, um, oh, I can kill this person. I might have to dive past their fort and their keep, but I can get the kill. I may or may not be guilty of that. I was charged for game <laughs> two especially. Um, but yeah, it's... Especially when um, it matters who you're playing against. So uh, the Junkrat was the one that we, we talked about would punish that, so... If you move too far up into a wall, that junk rat's gonna punish you. And the waffle copter is annoying as hell. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Much love for that, but that junk rat was annoying. Very. I mean, waffle copter exploited all of the annoyingness inherent to the character. <laughs> we'll say that to be polite. Um, moving on to game number two. Game number two was obviously the one on Dragonshire, and you guys picked that map. But absolutely, uh, I, I, I don't want to be mean, but we'll just say that uh, Region Divine played it extremely well. Kind of the same no, for question. Sure. Go ahead, sorry. So, what do you attribute that to? Um, Region Divine, I attribute his Region Divine as a really good team. I no hate for it. They, they played the shit out of that map. Uh, I mean, crap. Uh, that that's for PG, right? This uh, is where you're lucky we're not on Nexomania. <laughs> I know. Uh, Vox can give me some some glares later. But no, Regen Divine is an awesome team. They're a very strong team, and and they they played their hearts out. And even when we were trying to 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 anticipate movements, they invaded our camps. They were they moved on that uh, top bruiser late game. It was. It was a great move, and we were trying to call it out as it was happening, but Re Regen Divine's strong. They're really strong, and, and I have no no shame that they took a game from us because they're a top-tier team. I guess I guess the bigger question I had, and I mean, I've uh, expressed it very well, you guys chose to take them to Dragonshire, so I guess, what do you know why you made that decision, considering how practice region ended up apparently being on that map well um we we are practiced on that map as well um we were a little off our game we we had some unexpected uh rotations out into to having to deal with real life situations um 
regen divine felt like they did scout us very well and they, they were banning things that we were planning on picking um I, I i give them full credit they 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 outplayed us it we, we picked a map uh, that we felt comfortable on and and we got outplayed that's I, I had to I can't be ashamed of it though because they're they're a great team so oh a thousand percent um and then in the game number three now obviously you didn't play game number three so I can't ask you too too many specifics um do you so game number three really felt like well one of the big things to change is that Whitson actually got on Toronto which I think helped a lot um, well I mean I mean yeah, you can think that, that Wits can play Toronto really well, and, and Wits is really strong on it, but Wits is a really strong healer across the board. Um, and, and you know, we, we have flex healers. Both uh, Madathi and I can play healers as backup. Um, Wits could play, like, with a potato as his mouse instead and still be an amazing healer. That, that guy can play all the healers well he's he's really good he's really strong and i think that uh you know it, it doesn't matter what you give with he, <laughs> he'll he'll play the hell out of it well absolutely did so the last question and what i already know the answer to but i always give teams a chance to talk about it where does the name can't counterpick stupid come from um it comes before i joined the team um, there's, there's history there, uh, Valkymer and Wits and our siblings, and we've had other people on the team that are also related to them in the past. Um, we're a very family-oriented team, too. I mean, I don't, I don't know where it originally came. I know that they were less than three at one point. That was their, their moniker, but... Um, they've been CCS since I joined it, I think, three or four years ago. Probably about four years ago now. So, I, I couldn't tell you the, the myth of the, the origin of CCS. Wow. They clearly need to prepare, let you prepare for these interviews better. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they, we were arguing who would come, and then uh, I was like, yeah, it's all right, I'll go. So. See, this is why you guys need to be on your teams because I will always be like, oh, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> I propose Zephy came. Uh, Zephy never interviews, and that, that man vanished so quickly when I said that. <laughs> I'm calling you out, Zephy Mort, in chat right here. You should have been in this interview. But those are all the questions I had. Let me go ahead and turn it over to your. Uh, requisite and non-voluntary shout-outs? Um, definitely a shout-out to Wits End's mom. Uh, they get shouted out every single game we play. Uh, it's also Valkymer's mom, but I'm going to give Wits End credit this turn. So, uh, shout-out to Wits End's mom. Uh, shout-out to our opponents. They, they played the hell out of all three games. They played their hearts out, and they, they did really well. And like I said, they kicked the crap out of us game two, and I I can't fault them for it. They were really good. Uh, shout out to you and your boots. Um, boots stream forever, and your cats. And uh, on our essay, you should have uh, cleared out your schedule so you could have co-casted with Raka. I love it when you two co-cast together. We do do an amazing job. She is definitely one of my favorite co-casters. No, I will not rank them in public. You you shouldn't. I would give cats number two, so, or number one, so. I know there's definitely people I enjoy like, co-casting with more than my cats. They interfere. <laughs> Those cat, your cats are one. They're adorable. Are they all black cats? They are, both of them, yep. They're brothers. Yeah. They, they feel like they're always, like... They feel like there's three or four of them at once. Like they're coming from the left side of the stream, right straight, <laughs> coming from the top. I didn't know there was only two. I I could have sworn there was four of them because they're always they're always trouble. Yep, there's only two. Their names are Opera and Bug. 
um, Bug is short for Cuddle Bug because he is the one that is just constantly like, hey, hey pay attention to me. And then Opera's right. the one you see less, um, but you'll hear more because he likes to sing. I will shout out to your cats as well. I have, my, my family has two cats as well, and usually uh, CCS has to me, hear me curse them out because they want to stand on my tower and push my power button or jump up onto my desk when I'm trying to play. So shout out to Rocco's cats. Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's stories about my cats and the power button. CCS doesn't believe me, but I, I, I'm telling them, they my cats love that power button. They love sitting right on top of a warm tower and then stretching and hitting the power button. So, Legitimately? <laughs> this but is anyway. my power button cover that sits on top of the power button so it cannot be depressed. I have some bills that I, I try to cover it with, and it, it doesn't matter to them. They're, they're too fat for it. <laughs> But shout out to your cats as well, and, and shout out to you, Raka, for you you cast so much. You you put a lot into NGS, and and I want you to get the respect you deserve because you you pour your heart into it, and, and we love it, and we we appreciate you. Well, definitely do the best I can. So thank you. Well, you do great, and and the best you can is wonderful. So so never be ashamed of that. Oh, don't worry. Do you know me? <laughs> <laughs> I do, Raka, and, and thanks for everything. You're, you're a hoot. Yeah, I'll go and let you enjoy the after party now. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you for the amazing games, and also thank you to Regen Divine for equally amazing games. Agreed. Regen Divine, that was that was a great set, and uh, let's let's redo it in the finals. Let's 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 enjoy the same exciting series. So. All right. Good night, good night. Thank you again. Thank you. For you guys, we're actually going to go ahead. Um, once again, we're at the like very, very late night. I'm the last NGS caster, so I just get to raid with my friends. We're going to go see Ink, Ink Slime, which is just one of the first VTubers I ever saw. Like, very, very low-tech VTuber, but he's hilarious. <laughs>